how's it going? My name is Chris Hare. Uh, we're going to be going over a couple different sets of wheels today and focusing on, on what's in this box. They're the inertia wheels from Noto Film Systems. Um, we got some master wheels here, we got some Movi wheels here. They'll all pan and tilt and roll your camera, but these are extra special. So let's open them up. They come in a super small case, much lighter than some of the other cases. Boom. Everything you need right here. Got your wheels, got a receiver, your roll axis, and all your cableage. So let's pop this out of here. All right, so we've pulled everything out of the case. I'm gonna start by putting the antennas on. We've got our 2.4 receiver antenna and then we've got our 900 megahertz transmitter antenna. Next, I'm gonna plug in the third axis and then I'm going to attach the third axis. Plug it in and then we'll just plug in AC power. You can power it with a Dionic or a block battery either 12 or 24 volts. I recommend 24 volts because the wheels will perform a little better and we'll get into why in a second. You also have the receiver. Um, this is a universal receiver. It'll work with Ronin, Movi, Movi XL, Tilt-A-Gravity. I think they're working on the uh, Trinity as well. So that's exciting. But uh, before we attach the receiver, I've got a Ronin down here. Uh, I'm just gonna power it up. This is where the magic kind of starts to reveal itself. What you'll see is the wheels get a little twitch and they'll do this little calibration, right? So what makes these things so special over say uh, master wheels or Movi wheels is that your wheels are actually mounted to brushless motors. So what that gives you is a lot of customization and feel um, that is applied digitally. Um, whereas over here you have kind of a manual drag knob that you can apply to adjust the drag of the wheels. And then you have a digital smoothing that you can apply to smooth out any jerky motions. Um, but you're kind of stuck with the weight of this steel wheel. Same thing over here on the Movi wheels. You have brass wheels, they're nice and heavy. And then you also have a manual drag knob right here. And again, speed adjustment and then digital smoothing. So what we have here that makes these different is you can actually adjust the mass of the wheels or the apparent mass and also the drag. Uh, and that's done pretty easily uh, with these knobs here. I've got a drag and a mass and I can show you, let me zero those both out. And they just kind of free spin like, kind of like you'd expect an aluminum hand wheel to spin. Uh, what I can do to illustrate the cool effects here, let me take mass all the way up to 10 and all of a sudden it becomes a lot harder to spin. Uh, and why is this useful? Um, you know, when you're operating a shot, say you're doing a slow pan across a landscape um, and you just want to keep an easy, steady pace, this will physically kind of limit your acceleration changes um, and will result in a really smooth pan with really nice starts and stops as well. Now, of course, you can do that manually as well, but it just takes a little more muscle memory and practice and you know, in the set environment, any little help you can get is appreciated. So one of the best ways I've found to actually illustrate what's going on here without actually physically trying it, which I recommend you do, uh, is you get a weight, constant weight. I'm gonna use this lock. So we've got mass and drag at zero. I'm gonna put this lock on here and show you what happens. Just kind of falls and dangles around. Now, I'm gonna adjust the mass to 10, and we're gonna try this again. So you can see there's a drastic difference. The brushless motor is actually engaging and slowing that movement of the lock down. And so this is what your hand would feel as feedback when you're operating. So what else I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna increase the drag and show you what that does. So this is 10 drag and 10 mass. I'm gonna drop the lock. And it's not gonna oscillate quite as much because it has that drag fighting against it. So now let's do another experiment. Let me turn the mass all the way down and try it again, just fall straight. So essentially there, the wheel in the software 
weighs much less. So that drag has a little more uh, influence over it. And that's why you see it just settle straight down. Again, let me add that mass back in all the way to 10. And you see the weight of the wheel now has more power than the drag. Of course, you don't have to be 10 and 10, 0, 0. You can find a mixture. I happen to like 5 and 5 for most things. OK, so we got a Ronin here. I'm going to install the included receiver right there. Screw the antenna on. So these wheels operate at a range uh, between 400 and 1200 megahertz, which is in the kind of 900 megahertz band. It's a super long range, reliable frequency. 900 loves to go far as opposed to your 2.4 or 5.8 signals, common in like a Preston or Teradek or Wi-Fi even. So you're kind of outside of all those competing bands that are found on a film set, which is great. So let's plug this into the Ronin. I like to Velcro it on the back right there. It's gonna go into the D-Bus port, just like that. Let's flip these around. And there we go. Got pan and tilt, and of course some roll. I like using the roll sometimes just as a horizon trim on set, you know, you can line up with walls or different geometry on your set and get everything looking nice and level. And it's easily adjustable there. And of course you can always hit freeze and that'll disable it. I'm just gonna kind of show you what the different mass and drag settings do with an actual head active. Let's start with mass. So mass is at zero. And you see my pans are snappy. So I'm gonna change the mass to 10. Uh, initiate a pan here. You can see how smooth that is, right? It just feels like a heavy remote head or a heavy camera. I can kind of bring that to a stop. And this is so easy. I mean, I'm, anybody could do this. I'm just spinning the wheel and you get this great smooth pan. Same thing with tilt. You get this robot that kind of feels like it's floating in molasses almost. Right? So let me bring that mass back down. And now you see we have a Kind of a touch of your head, good for action scenes, you know, following somebody around really quick, needing to change direction really fast. You can add some drag, a little bit of mass, and then you kind of find something in the middle that's nice for just general, say, narrative work or, you know, commercial work. So let's dive into the menus a little bit while we're here. Go menu, we've got our output, you know, we can select Ronin, all these different remote heads. Yeah, wireless, there's also a hard line mode, wired mode, that just plugs into the back. Band tilt, you can reverse, you can change the speeds here, you can do adaptive dampening, which is really cool. I'll show you that real quick. Set to zero, there's no change, it's gonna listen to your inputs one to one. If you bump that up to 15, it's still gonna listen to your inputs one to one at like lower speeds and smaller movements. But then you'll see if you do a fast movement, it starts to dampen that out. So that's helpful in say, you know, a fight scene where you need some finesse and then, you know, someone's throwing punches and you're trying to follow them. It's gonna keep, keep you a little more mellow. So of course you have digital smoothing like any of the other wheels where it's just gonna kind of smooth out all your moves. It can be nice, but you kind of lose a lot of control. Your limits, you have tilt pan limits. Those are great. I'll show you those real quick. Can set my upper tilt limit to there and then if I tilt up, it won't get any further than that. It's great for whip pans, whip tilts, what have you. So one of my favorite effects on the inertia wheels is the handheld emulation. Go to the dashboard and it gives kind of a good visual representation of what's happening. Increase the speed, <clears throat> decrease the scale, get the speed all the way up and you can see the Ronin starting to do a handheld jitter, almost like you're hard mounted to a car or something. For more of a handheld feel, I would lower the speed, increase the scale, and then you get this kind of, you know, breathing effect. And we actually use this on our Obi wan series for Disney+. Plus. A lot of the show was shot handheld, and there were some Ronin scenes that we wanted to match some, some of the handheld. So we just set this up and went away operating the wheels. Another super exciting feature with the inertia wheels is the record ability. We can go in here and we can hit record. There we're recording and do some moves like that. And we'll stop recording, play the move. So not touching anything, Ronan's going off of what we just did. There we go, you got a repeatable head. Now let's hop into our wireless menu. Go into here, you got your regions, got a cool mode functionality here, fast or range. 
based on what you're prioritizing. If you're trying to go long range, you can send less packets per second, or if you're in a controlled close environment, you can send more packets per second and get a better response from the head. It's a nice option to have. You've got a fully selectable frequency range. This is in, within the North America legal limits, but you can also select any other region or range. There's a frequency scan built in. We can go ahead and try that. So there's a new feature in the inertia wheels called LOS bridging or loss of signal bridging. If we enable that, what that does is if there happens to be some kind of a signal loss for you know, a couple milliseconds, a couple packets here or there, if your mid pan or move on your remote head and you lose signal for a couple milliseconds, what the inertia wheels will do is they'll recognize that and they'll continue whatever move you were doing. Say you're doing a pan to the right and a tilt, the inertia wheels will continue that move during a loss of signal event and when you regain signal they'll do some math and they'll kind of blend that back into your current wheel positioning. So the idea there is on the off chance you have some kind of signal interference say at long range you're most likely not going to notice it. Let's talk about some of the customizable options on the wheels. You've got four hot buttons on the bottom here, which you can assign to pretty much any function in the menu system. Right now, number one here is neutral. It disables the wheels. Great for walking away or holding a lock off or something. So let's do button two. Say we want to set that to a tilt down limit. Go ahead and set that. Let's set our button three to a tilt up limit. And then button four, let's do our roll reset. That's handy. So now I can set a limit down right there. And once again, it won't let me go past that limit. Very repeatable. You can just delete that limit right there. You can set one for up. Again, very useful function. Our roll level, let's get it off level and hit re-level brings you back to level. That being said, I highly recommend these wheels. I encourage anybody who owns a Ronin, Movi, Movi XL out there to pick up a set. They're available online, noto.film. So happy panning, tilting, and rolling. Thanks for watching.